Hi there, I'm going to take you through one of the ways of mining on Tori testnet. Tori is a proof of work blockchain that is 60% merge mined with Monero and 40% mined with a simple SHA-3 hash. You don't need to understand the details of these algorithms, but basically it means that you can mine Monero and Tori at the same time. Merge mining, however, has a slightly more complicated setup and I'll be showing you the simpler SHA-3 method. Um, which we'll be using the Tari miner. All right, so the first step is to download and get the miner and the base node. And we can head over to tari.com onto the downloads page, view the binaries. Uh, and this guide will be for Windows, but um, Mac OS and Linux will be similar. All right, so let's download the binaries. Once that is downloaded, you can extract the package and you'll have a folder like this. All right, we'll be using three of these applications, um, the Tori base node, the wallet, and the mining node. Um, uh, and we'll, we'll start with the base node. The base node is basically your copy of the blockchain uh, that is stored locally. And the first thing you'll need to do is to sync or download the blocks from the other nodes on the network. Now Tor uses Tor, it can use TCP, but I'm not gonna go into that for this guide. So let's start up Tor. All right, for this warning, we'll run anyway. All right, and Tor is running, let's start the base node. The base node will start up, config file does not exist. We can create a default one for you, we're gonna say yes. We want to install a logging file as well, and we want to create a node identity as well. Alrighty, so our base node has started up, um, and you will see that it says that it's on the Dublin network, which is the latest testnet. Uh, it is in a listening state, and it is on tip zero, which is the best block. Um, we're going to wait for this now to download from the other nodes on the network. And we'll see how it goes. Just to note that on some Windows applications, you might need to go to Properties and turn off Quick Editor. That'll just stop you from accidentally pausing the application while it's running, waiting for input. It's just a quirk that Windows has. Right, so we've already synced to the tip. We synced very quickly and we're up to tip 190. When you're running this, it may be a much higher um, value that you're looking at. We can verify that we are on the latest tip by looking at the date over here. It says Monday, 24th of Jan, which is when I'm recording this. This time is in UTC and the time currently is, um, will be 18, 18 basically in U, uh, UTC time. All right, so that means we're up to date. We can also verify that by going to the text explorer. This is a block explorer that tells us what tip it is on and it says that it's on height 190. And if we look at ours, we're on height 190. So that means we are synced up and we are ready to start our wallet and our miner. All right, so just a quick note that Tori is still in testnet, so um, there may be times when the applications or the network is unstable, and also the coins that you mine cannot be exchanged for other currencies. All right, so let's start up a wallet. Let's go back to our application where we downloaded these. We'll start up the Tori console wallet. Say run anyway. Would you like to create? Yes, we would. We would like to create a new wallet. We can put in a password. We, these are the seed words. If you're familiar with wallets, you can use these. You, you should keep these safe. Obviously this is testnet, so the value is not worth anything. But if you ever want to recover this wallet to another machine, uh, you can do so by entering these words. Uh, and when you're starting a new wallet, you would choose um, option number two, recover wallet from seed words. So now we've saved them somewhere safe. We'll type in confirm. 
All right, and we'll wait for this wallet to now connect to a base node. Okay. So currently this wallet is connected to a random node on the internet that is found. Uh, these are the peer seed nodes that are the original nodes that uh, wallets and base nodes will use to find. Now the next step is optional, but you can choose to connect the wallet to the base node that we're running here. And you don't have to do this, this is optional, but we'll do this if you're gonna be mining, it's generally better to have the wallet and the miner that you're using connecting to the same base node so that they're both looking at the same version of the chain at a point in time. So we're gonna do that by just getting the address of this base node and we're going to put it into the wallet. So inside of the base node, there's actually a bunch of commands you can run. And if you type up help here, you'll see that there's a whole bunch of commands that you can run. Um, we're gonna be using the who am I command. And this is going to give the public key and the public address that we're gonna to use to put into the wallet. Now we're gonna do that over here and we're gonna press P. I'm gonna copy it from here. Right, and then we'll get the address. And this step is optional. You don't have to do this, as I said. And let's wait for our wallet to be able to see the base node. Okay, so the base node tip you can see here is on 190, and we can see the latency is around one second, which over Tor network is basically what it is. And if we go back to the transactions tab, we can see that we have no transactions and no funds. So let's change that by starting up a mining node. So in that same download folder that we had, we can go and we can find the mining node. And we can double click him to start him up. All right, no logging file. Would you like to create one? Yes, I would. All right. Okay, so here is our miner running. He's connected to our local base node on this port and our local wallet on this port. And he's um, mining at a hash rate of 0 0.87 mega hash per second over one thread and he's mining at a height of 190. Now, it may take some time for you to find a block. Um, when you see this transaction that pops up as a Coinbase, um, it doesn't necessarily mean that you've won the block. Um, once we've actually found a valid solution to this, it will change from Coinbase into mine confirmed. Um, it can take quite a while to find a block. The block, um, it, it all depends on how many other miners are on the network at the time. So, um, the block time for the SHA-3 algorithm is five minutes. So for example, if there are 10 other miners running the same machine that you're running, each of you would find a block every 50 minutes on average, sometimes sooner, sometimes later. Um, but you would, uh, it, it may take a while before you start seeing a block uh, arrive in here. All right, so a question that we get asked quite a lot is how can we improve the efficiency of the miner? Now, this is still test net, so the coins are not worth any specific money. They're not, you can't exchange them for coins uh, or for Bitcoin or for fiat currency. Um, but if you would like to improve your odds of finding some blocks, you can do this, this is optional. Uh, you can see here we're running at one thread. I'm gonna change it over to run a few more threads. So I'll stop that miner and we'll see that the Coinbase will disappear just now. But if we go into in Windows, it's C, users, your user profile, uh, and then into .tari. 
the .tari, and then into the config file. Then we can open this config file. I'm going to open it up in Notepad. You can use any editor you want. Then I'm going to find the mining node. And then once I've found the mining node section, I can look for this num mining threads. And we're going to change this up to 16. I have 16 threads on this machine. I'm going to save that. And then we are going to go and start the miner again. All right, so now we've got a much higher hash rate on this miner, and we should find a block relatively soon. Okay, so I paused that for about five minutes, and after five minutes, we've got an a transaction here that now says mine confirmed. So mine confirmed means that it's uh, actually physically in the blockchain and other miners and other base nodes have also put it into their blockchain. Unconfirmed will eventually change to confirmed. Confirmed means that another block has been built on top of it. Uh, when it is in an unconfirmed stage, there's still a chance that it can be replaced by another miner uh, in a process we refer to as reorging or as a reorg. Um, but the more confirmations, the more blocks that are built on top of it, the more confirmations it has. Um, and once this Coinbase reaches a height of two, once the height reaches a height of 200, um, then the funds that we received as a block reward in this transaction will be spendable. Um, you also, as a miner, don't have to mine those blocks. If anyone else mines the block, um, it will be, uh, it, as long as it's on top of this block, it will count towards confirmation. So if we look at the blocks, block explorer, no, the miner that we got was for block 194. Um, so 194, this was our block here that was created. Alrighty, with a maturity of 200. Okay. All right, after pausing for a few more minutes, uh, we can see that this Coinbase has moved over to mine confirmed. That means that there are three blocks that have been built on top of it, um, and it will eventually be spendable at block 200. That's all there really is to it. Um, there are a number of other ways of mining. Um, I think the easiest is to go to the Tari GitHub page, uh, and in the README on the mining section, there are many ways to go through many variations for mining, mining against pools, um, and merge mining. Um, but for now, this is mining with SHA-3. I'll do merge mining in another video. Uh, if you have any questions, pop us a question in Discord or in IRC or Telegram, and we'd be happy to help out. But until then, happy mining.